say that uh, it was probably one of the, it certainly was one of the best teams I ever had a chance to play on. And, you know, it, it certainly didn't end the way we wanted it to end. Uh, you know, we had one game all year where we, uh, we did not hold a lead. Uh, after the eighth inning, and that was the sixth game of the World Series, you know. So, wow. um, it, yeah, it was a pretty good team. How about it, Whitey? Oh, I, I think it's the best team I've managed to say. Oh, it's not, I think the team I managed Kansas City in 77 was probably my best team I managed. And uh, not that I'm trying to knock the 85 team, because we went with a four-man rotation in May. Uh, Fortunately, had a gimpy back. Kepshar was kind of in and out. And then of course, Danny Cox and John Tudor and uh, and Joaquin just pitched great all year. And uh, four-man rotation. John Tudor started off one, uh, one and seven, finished 22 and eight. Joaquin won his 21st game the first week of August, and we played the Halloween. And he still had 21. But Danny Cox pitched with a gimpy arm, was 18 and 12. And you know, we could go into a three-game series, and I think. My players felt we knew we were never going to lose a three-game series when we had those three guys lined yeah. up to pitch, and that's a heck of a feeling. And we also thought we had a chance to sweep everybody, and we ended up with a team that was supposed to finish last, and I was supposed to be the first manager fired, and we won 101 games and went to the seventh game of the World Series, and we could have really won it very easily in six. The one thing I want to say here that we don't sound like a bunch of crybabies. I know we got a bad call uh, in that sixth game, and. Uh, uh, if we if we get that out, of course, we put it away. We only scored 14 runs in six games, and we only scored 14 runs in seven. The Kansas City starting pitching, and I remember Jack and uh, and Ozzy in our pregame meeting, and we were talking to Momo Sally and Freddie McAllister, and they sound every guy sounded like Walter Johnson or or Rube Waddell. I said they must have a heck of a pitching staff. Well, it turned out their pitching staff was an outstanding staff, and we didn't really defense. Uh, the first baseman very good. He got a lot of ground ball base hits. We should have played him off the line and we were planning to pull. We did a lot of things wrong, but do you realize that we could have won that World Series of six games with 14 runs? Boy. Um, Jack, I've heard you say that that was the first time when you joined that team that you even heard anything out of management. Hey, we got a chance to win a championship when Lou Sussman said that because you weren't used to it in San Francisco. Well, that's true coming from San Francisco. And to hear that, you know, these, these two Hall of Famers right now say, that was the best team. Usually, the best team is the one that wins the World Series. <laughs> like you guys did, maybe too. So it was. Uh, it, but for me, coming, it was. Yeah, I mean, uh, you have no idea coming from Candlestick Park and that those frustrating years in San Francisco, and coming to a team that had you know Whitey and uh, Jack Buck around every day, and Gussie Bush was the owner. And then you know when I was in San Francisco, Joe Morgan always told me he was you know came from the Big Red Machine and kind of taught me a lot about winning and how teams and how Johnny Bench and Tony Perez and those guys would try to win. And he always would say that everybody should have an opportunity to play with Pete Rose and for uh, Sparky Anderson. But I'll tell you right now, everybody should have an opportunity to play with Ozzy and uh, for, for Whitey Herzog, you know, and to be around Willie McGee and those type of players every day. If we weren't the best, we had the best people on the team for sure. And uh, it was sure it was fun to go to work every day and feel like... Uh, like, you know what the best part, Frank, I think was what, what, what uh, uh, for me, was what Whitey just said. We were supposed to come in last place. Whitey was going to be the first manager fired. And we pretty much showed everybody that they don't know what they're talking about. And, and sometimes you know right from spring training, yeah, we're going to be great. Or sometimes you don't know until September. Did you know as soon as you looked at that team? Well, I knew that with the type of players that we had, um, with the makeup of the players that we had, that we were going to be a good team. We were going to be competitive. Uh, whether or not we were going to win, you know, a, a lot of things have to fall into place during the course of the season, and and you have to have good you have to have good pitching, and uh, you know I think I thought we played well enough from a defensive standpoint to certainly be competitive, but uh, uh, our pitching I, I I think really stepped up and uh, it really so solidified things for us. Ozzie Smith is with us. Whitey Herzog is with us. Jack Clark is with us. Uh, you know that sabermetric stuff they all talk about, uh, Bill James and all this stuff, uh, about on-base percentage. I know that wasn't talked about much then, but you look at that team, and you had all these guys like that Ozzie and Jack and Tommy. I mean, your on-base percentage that year was like 400. Yours was like 360. Hers was, you had a bunch of guys just get on base. Well, I always thought, and with the pitcher hitting in the National League, when I came over here after managing five years, uh, with the DH over in Kansas City and, and one year in Texas. 
that the second place hitter and the eighth place hitter in the, in the National League lineup were the, out of the most important two spots. Not that you didn't want a good th three guy or four guy, but if you had a second place guy that could make contact, go deep in the count, get on base about 35% or more, and then you had an eighth place hitter that could do the same thing, so you always had your pitcher bunting with one out, that was a big advantage to you. And I think whether Ozzy or Tommy, they, I switched them a lot between second and eighth that particular year, and they both did an outstanding job. And they'd go deep in the count, they'd make the pitcher pitch, and invariably with one out, I mean, we could get a, a guy on first base, and if it was either one of the two, they could steal second, and the pitcher could bunt him to third. And our pile, big deal was, we only had really one guy that could hit a home run, which was Jack. It was two. Joaquin well, hit, yeah, Joaquin hit, hit that one that night. That was the biggest. Uh, I, I, I <laughs> Left-handed, I'll never, never forget that. You know. But anyway, I don't think he ever got another hit left-handed. I don't even think he made contact. contact. After that. But, uh, but Jack had a tremendous year, which we all know. And I, I, I and we'd pick up the paper every day, and we got to have this guy hitting behind pool holes and everything. You know, I had. <laughs> Tito Landrum and Andy hidden behind him and platooned them, and they both did a good job. Don't get me wrong. But the thing about our lineup, we set the table. Our motto was, hey, get, get Jack up there. We were two runs down. Let's get on base. Let's get Jack up there. And uh, Vince, you know, we had to make him take three and one pitches and two and oh, because he walked him. It was a triple. But Ozzie and Tommy and, and those guys just set the table all night, and we could get men on base. They couldn't pitch around Jack. Well, we'll take a short time out. When we come back. Hatred of the Mets, the Matt Holiday situation, and the Mark McGuire story. Ozzy Smith, Whitey Herzog, Jack Clark with us on the press box. We'll be back in two minutes. We are back. This is the press box on Five Nine of the Fan, KFNS and KFNS.com. We had Daryl Strawberry on a few months back, and he talked about the real hatred, although he had respect for you guys. How, what was that... Uh, emotions like when you played the Mets? Was it real hatred? Did you dis dislike them? And, and why? They had a bunch of dislikable guys, let's face it. <laughs> Backman and uh, Dykstra. They had a bunch of guys you just didn't like. You know, I, I hear again, it was we respected everybody that we played. Um, I don't think that there was true hatred as much as there was you know, a, a real desire on, on our behalf to, to prove that we were a better club. And I think in the long run, because we were a better defensive ball club, we probably won more than 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 they did. Did you uh, did you dislike them? I mean, isn't it true about Gary Carter when when a great base dealer like you and Vince would get on base, uh, he'd pretend like it's like oh, uh, pass ball. It. Yeah, he'd drop it so he wouldn't <laughs> throw it, so it wouldn't count against his uh, throwing out percentage. I mean, what do you think, Jack? How'd you feel about the Mets personally? Well, we just look for it to embarrassing them every game. <laughs> you know, I mean, I would stand up there and tell the Ozzy or Vince and just wave to them at first base, like, go ahead, take off, you know? And they'd throw over there, slide step, or hold the ball, or pitch out, or whatever, and then they'd leave one up in the zone, and I'd hit a long single and get a ribby. <laughs> you know, so it was, uh, it, it, you know what, it wasn't that we just didn't like them. I think they just thought they were so much better than us, because again, we were that team that wasn't supposed to compete the way we did, and when they couldn't beat us, um, you know, it was pretty special for us, and, and we definitely rubbed it in for those guys over there that thought they were so good. I mean, we, we, we out-pitched them for the most part. We definitely out-defensed out them, and, we, you know, we, we slugged them. We slugged them around, too, because they had guys that were supposed to do that to us, but we, you know, I got mine, but, you know, we all did, we all did our share. I mean, Terry Pendleton, everybody, Tommy, Ozzy, everybody, you know, hitting balls in the gaps and doubles with guys on base was, you know, just like a three-run home run. Whitey, what about the rivalry? Well, I, I think the New York press, you know, it's got something to do with that. You know, you go there and everything's buzzing and, and they're so good. I can remember, uh, you know, the one time uh, they beat us on a Friday night and Gooden was pitching the next day and uh, they were supposed to go into first place the next day. And it was almost like a shoe-in. They put the game on uh, game of the week, Gooden started and we win 10-1. to 1. And uh, I remember another series, we went in there, they had their four millionaire pitchers uh, pitching and we had four guys making less than 200,000 and we swept them, you know, so. Kurt Kepshire, maybe? No, I mean, it just kind of grinded against them a little bit, but if you look at the clubs on paper, they had the best team. I mean, they, they really did when you had, uh, you know, they had a great pitching staff with Fernandez and Darling and Gooden and, uh, and, uh, 
you know, their bullpen uh, wasn't as good as my guys. I mean, even when I hit Suter, even when I got Borel to come up here and do a, I mean, a tremendous job for it, I never did like their, 